All right. Apologize for the delay. Um, I can't see my camera because I wanted to make sure everybody else can get the correct angle today. Uh, my camera is very weird where that it, um, it does a kind of a mirror image instead of the actual image. So it always, it always ends up putting the subject matter on the opposite side. So today, um, I feel like the boat should definitely be on the side that it's on. So I want to make sure everybody sees it the way that I see it. <laughs> um, but this is uh, for anybody who is, um, you know, into the paintings that have the silhouettes. Um, you know, it's totally up to you if you like to just use black and just put it right on top. Or if you wanted to take it a little further and... Um, make your silhouette stand out a little bit more with uh, the different um, depths in it and uh, just little touch-ups that you can do. So I wanted to show how simple it honestly is. Um, this painting took me an hour, if that, to complete. Um, so it's a nice little quick one. It's a good one for all ages. Um, real simple brush techniques. And I'll show you the brushes we're going to be using right now. First one I'm going to start with is the large cover brush. This is on a 16 by 20 canvas and um, I feel like this brush is definitely very good for a lot of the background but at the same time um, I'm not just covering I'm also thinking uh, along a few lines during that process and I'll go over that after I show these brushes here but this is the first brush, big brush. Um, another brush it's gonna be this uh, rougher brush and it's good for the clouds um, that's the main gist of what we'll be using it for as always I've got my two smaller brushes for just working details in there so you'll want to have some smaller detail brushes I'm gonna use the fan brush today I'm super excited about that and use it on some of the water and um, also on the trees. And lastly, it's a brush I always bring up every single video. Um, it's my very fine liner brush that I like to use. Always gotta have this one. This is for all those real nice thin lines that, that are in the painting. Um, so I was looking up paintings and I was trying to figure out what would be good for today and I thought, you know, a lot of people kind of gravitate toward the silhouette painting. Um, I changed up one that I saw that really stood out to me. Um, there was a lot less, um, kind of the water and the sky were the same color down to the blue of the water. Um, but I thought, you know, It'd be nice to add some more color to it and um, then the boat I tried to keep it as close as possible but I did switch it up a little bit as well um, and then the tree same thing um, it's a little bit more green on what I saw but added some different layers to it so uh, we're gonna go along and you know see what you like about about this painting see what you want to add see what you want to take away see what you want to do um, keep it simple for yourself. If you don't want to add all the details to the silhouette, feel free to just use black. Um, but if you do, it's just real, it's real easy. So let's get started here. I'm going to start off with the colors. It's all my primary. So it's white, yellow, red, blue, black, and everything that it comes after that honestly has been mixed into the painting. So, um, trying to keep this simple for everybody I know that supplies are not easy to come by so keeping it simple showing what we can honestly do with with the simple the basics um, the red yellow blue white black you know the, they go a very long way and you can see they bring out some nice colors so no need to get any anything fancy just gonna stick with the primaries show you how they work. So I have
have to add some more paint to my platform, my palette here. As usual, I'm working on a very dirty palette. It has all kind of colors all over it. Which is why I didn't really want to show it. <laughs> but, yeah, red, yellow, blue, white, black. Yellow, yellow, and I think I'll be good. Um, if you have more paints that you uh, can use if you're watching this and you want to use them, feel free. You know, you can use other shades of blues, other shades of red, other shades of yellow. Um, you can use green, you can use purples. Um, whatever you you would like you can use orange you know whatever you have if you want to add those um, feel free to add as you go if you like the thalo green thalo blue go that way too but very first thing just rinse and dry the brush to make sure it's ready to go And I actually like to start with white. So there's a light source up here in the sky. Um, I call it the sun. And, you know, you can keep it simple and just do all the sky and then come back later and do the sun. Um, that's what I did on the original here. I just put a little sun and then around it, I, sp I spread that white in a circular motion just kind of around it. You can do that uh, if you want to keep it simple. If you want to start with the light source, you can do it that way as well. And it's as simple as right now taking this white paint on your big brush and making that light source exactly where it's going to be. So I'm going to put it right there in the sky. So it was just a nice circular motion with some white paint. Might have had a little bit of green on there. I'm okay with that because I want to make sure it's seeable but there it is and from there you really want to spread the light source circular out after that um, I come in with with the white for the sky kind of line it line it down for for the moment and let it spread out a little bit. So, the higher the sky, the lighter it's going to be. The lower it's going to start to get darker. So, I take yellow and white on my brush at the same time. And I start to work that in here. And instead of dipping back into the yellow, I'm dipping back into the white to spread that yellow <laughs> my brush just wants to hold all this green sorry about that but as I was saying you're going to add white to your to your brush instead of adding yellow and just spread that side to side As it comes lower, you can just stick with the yellow. I'm switching back and forth between using it like this and using it like this. When I want kind of the the in-betweens with the lighters and, and the, di the dark um, I kind of switch to this this angle here when I just want to kind of spread some color I, I start with this angle here, but I'm always ended up switching them back to, to this motion here, so 
this helps divide it up it helps leave that light there and put this dark here and put it light you know it really disperses it nicely so take your time put in your sky Keep it light up top. Keep it dark near the bottom. And by dark I just mean use that full hue of yellow that is there. You don't have to add anything to it yet. We're probably going to take this about this far down. So almost half. Or almost, yeah, almost half a little bit lower. If you want to lighten up any spots, just throw some light and start working it in. I don't feel like you have to overwork it. If you overwork it, you're going to blend everything a lot more. Um, if you like it to be blended just completely, you can do that. If you want to leave some streaks for maybe some light or some clouds, then don't overwork it closer it comes to the light source, the lighter it gets as well. So, real light around there. If you're not really worried about the light source, you just want to put the sky down, don't worry about it. Just do your entire sky, and like I said, add a little round circle for the sun later, and then after it dries even more, you know, just brush out some more of the light streaks which I'll show later on that technique because I'll we'll have to do it anyway If anybody gets confused by that, let me know. I can help you out however you need, however we need to adjust. I just wanted to make sure that I showed a few um, ways that you can add your light source in here and make it affect the environment. And keep it super light up there. Lots of weight. A little bit of yellow. Just make sure you cover all of your canvas. You don't want any canvas bare so even if you just cover it in white that's fine I hope that this camera from what I saw it was set up fine but I hope that it is allowing everyone to see what's going on and understand if not I'll just have to re-record this Make sure I get it right. <laughs> so it's up to you to decide down at the bottom here. If you want to add a pinch of red to go kind of cantaloupe orangey um, or if you just want to stick with this yellow I like the switch up from the yellow to a little bit of orange because it adds more more value to the eye um, in my opinion but if your eye you know if you everybody's different so you know you might not like the cantaloupe orange from from the yellow you might like it to just stay golden yellow down here 
and you are free to make that decision. If you like it to just stay yellow, then stick with the yellow and don't do the next step. But if you like that little bit of orange in the sky, then I'm gonna show you right now how that happens. So near the bottom here, I'm actually gonna mix a color. Well, no, no, I'm not, not yet. We mix the color in a little bit. I didn't mix the color at this point. I actually added just a little bit of red to the brush. I threw it here and I threw it here. And then I went back into my yellow. I did not dry or rinse off the brush. I just go straight into the yellow and I dispersed it. It's gonna take a lot of yellow because there's I, red goes a long way on here. So mix it to your liking. If you like the red, you can add some red. You can go from orange to red. But if you don't really want it to be red and you want to stay with the orange, really push that in there. Really blend it. Scrub brush. I'm always showing the scrub brush technique. You always want to stick with that when I say to push it in. That's the scrub. So right here it's real heavy and it has a division line. I want to get rid of that but I don't want to use what's on this brush for that. I want to rinse that out and dry it off. And I'll come into the white before I go into anything else. I'm going to start with the white here and spread this downward. So scrub brush it downward into the orange. I'd rather change that. Then, then to hit everything that I worked to get with the light up here. If you have to rinse and dry a few times, feel free to do that. Um, I'm just gonna go with what I got, make it all work. So get it to your liking, you know. Um, right now it looks like it's gonna stay golden. Honestly, when it dries, it's gonna be more orange like this. I noticed that's what happened. Um, so if you wanna brighten it up more to keep with your gold, just add more yellow. Um, if you like kind of that orange, then we're ready for what's next. So, so far we got our light source, we got our sky. We've got that transition that's happening in the sky. And a lot of people will approach the next portion down here right away with, you know, just continuing this downward. Um, what I did, this is where I mixed a color and I mixed my yellow with my red to make an orange. More yellow than red, a lot more yellow. Still staying really light. And I'll show you what it's in the middle here. That lighter orange right in there. I'll see if I can position that right. Hopefully the sun is not making this hard to see. Just a light orange. And now I'm actually going to just take it across here. And that's going to be the start of the water. So one way that we can decipher that is by adding a little bit of white to this brush and making a line right across here. We do want a divider line for this one. We do want to make a division. And we're going to tweak this line a bit. But for now, I'm just going to set it down so we know where it is. And do that with a small brush if you like, or if you can, if you want, you can stick with the large brush. We started our water and now we're actually going to go from orange and keep this all pretty pretty light and then you're going to want to start to blend your yellow back in here and 
and I'm kind of waving my brush around to, to give it a little bit of movement. I like movement in the water. It doesn't always have to be crazy, but I like when it's, when it's always moving. So I wiggle my brush as if that's, that's the case. You want to add some white and bring it down you can do that of course i got some of that green in there but i'm going to use that for later on when we add some of that blue Mix it up, add some yellows in there, then go back to white. Never rinsing or drying the brush unless you end up with a color you don't want to throw in there. So you can start to see the movement is happening very, uh, very vaguely. Um, let me make sure. Yep. From what I can see of the camera, I can see everything that I see in person here. So that's good. Very good. Now, where the sun is, right here, we're going to come down here on the water and kind of squiggle in some light. Some, some white, I should have said. Gonna make that lighter. So that's where it is and it's just gonna be the very vague idea that it's reflecting you know that the Sun's reflection is right there it doesn't have to be super heavy for this painting it just needs to be there this is just you know kind of a beginner course to to painting So if you'd like, you can rinse and dry the brush, but you don't have to. Um, but I am going to, so that I can show how we're going to mix this turquoisey color that's going to come down here into the water. Um, I'm going to take my blue and my yellow. A little bit of yellow. A little bit of blue. I'm going to make a teal. So make sure that you have enough that you're making a teal shade. And we're going to take a lot of white to bring it up. If you need to add a little more blue, you can. I, kinda, I like I like where this is, though. I like that. So this is actually going to start happening here. And we're going to mix it in the exact same way that we have been. And don't be afraid to blend it up in some spots. That way, like I said, I'm going to work with that green that was in there. It's not just going to be yellow-blue. It's actually going to blend into itself. So you can even take some yellow and carry it around a little bit. You can carry it into the blue if you like. Take some blues down here. Just keep with that motion, that nice swervy motion that that looks like water you can add white as you go as well white's gonna help a lot with this it's real flowy real free with your wrist we're not over uh, stroking any of these colors and we're just letting them fall on the canvas and be what they are lighter you can go darker you can really mix it up down here as long as it's having a nice transition from yellow to blue 
I'm gonna even take some white up here. Yeah, I'll take it a little bit darker down. <clears throat> I'm gonna add some blue to my turquoise I, I mixed. So if you are not done using that, go ahead and keep keep using it. And you know, if you want to go darker, you can add some blue to it and then come down to this this step. I always love when water is a lot of different colors. Especially in painting, it really gives you um, the chance to be more creative with it. Um, it gets your mind kind of thinking. I, I almost feel like it opens up your mind to to nice freedoms in general. I don't know why or how that works, but for me, it just really frees my, my mind. I'm going to rinse and dry my brush again. If you wanted to add more orange up top, you're welcome to do so. I'm going to add a little bit. Kind of along some of these areas. Same technique though. And if you wanted to switch down to a smaller brush for this, I should have mentioned that earlier. I usually say that, um, and I know I said it at one point, but if you wanted to switch to a smaller brush for this down here you definitely can um, I'm sticking with with this brush here and that is step one of the water um, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit and give everybody some time to how to get to this place if you're following along. If you want to do your edges, you can follow the scene around the edges or you can um, pick a color that you like and go around the edges, it could be green, it could be blue, could be brown. I really like brown um, for most of mine because it just gives it kind of a nice, I think it gives it a nice frame, um, kind of more natural. Um, a lot of people like black, uh, it's also an option and it's nice as well. Um, like I guess I usually stick with the brown. Um, I, I like, the idea of wooden frames so the brown is is that for me so if you like something like that it's a dark brown that I do so if you have a regular brown and you have to darken it at all add blue and um, more brown than blue to make a dark brown or you could go the other way and do a dark blue um, more blue than brown and I hope I just said that right so if you you're going dark brown more brown than blue. If you're going dark blue, more blue than brown. There you go. Just in case I said that wrong the first time. <laughs> but I'm not going to worry about my um, edge at the moment. We're actually going to come up top here and do some clouds with this brush. I'm going to start off with some white. I might have a little bit of this green kind of thing in it, but I'm going to go with it. That way you can see. I'm going to lay down some spots, and then I'm going to scrub it in. This is a scrub brush technique. Um, I call it scrub brush. Other people call it dry brush. Uh, but it's a lot of scrubbing. It's just scrub, scrub, scrub. If you wanted to add a little bit of orange in there, you can on the bottom. Very little bit of paint though, you don't need much of anything on it, it's really dry brush. So dry it off, I'm swirling it while I'm scrubbing it, 
if you want to add a little bit of that blue you can uh, thing about this too the more depth you want to go into with your clouds you're gonna let them dry and you're gonna come back and do this again kind of up top mostly it's gonna get heavier and heavier and heavier but um, I am happy with how vague it is in the original here example so I'm gonna leave it pretty vague up top but however much you would like to add feel free Um, I don't even rinse for this. I just dry it on my my towel So just really really dry brush It doesn't need to be wet. It needs to be dry It's the best cloud brush I have ever seen Let me show this light source uh, stuff here real fast. Um, I'm gonna take white on a smaller brush now. And over there, I just did a small circle kind of in the middle here. And I'm okay with there being a little green so everyone can see what's going on with this. I'll even use yellow actually, so that it's very apparent. You're gonna use white. Um, so the source itself should be about this size or smaller and around it I'm just going to keep throwing in the white even if I have to go along the edges of this light source itself just to kind of blend it in a little bit that circular motion is going to keep everything intact there and then you can actually spread out some little beams here some little kind of light beams but again with the white I have a different color so that everyone can see what is happening you add some yellow to that again so the more white the more of the actual kind of light idea you're going to get, since I have yellow, it's not going to be quite that, but um, you just keep working it and keep scrubbing that in there. That's going to bring out even more of your light source. So I'll leave mine as is, um, maybe, maybe later on I can, um, adjust that and then put it up in a post. All right. So I remember when I was doing this, I kind of threw some birds up top here while I was waiting on things to dry. So think about where your boat's gonna be. Try not to hit that area unless you are okay with um, one of the, I think it's a mast, um, or the sails, one of, one of those. <laughs> if you're okay with one of those kind of going over top of one of your birds, you can put a bird there. I didn't really anticipate that, but it ended up happening and I like, I like how it worked, but you know, think about where you want your birds and I'm using a real thin 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 line brush I'm just gonna use my pinky here to kind of guide me along this dry canvas very lightly very tip of the brush I just I just do what a what you usually do for little birds little swoops all different sizes even just a dash of a line if you like.
some closer, some further. Um, if if you get something like this one right here, the very first one I did, where there's some of that line missing, that's a nice effect because of the light hitting it. You know, that that's gonna convey that the light is affecting that bird and, and kind of it it um entails the entire piece at that point. So don't get frustrated and, and you know say, Oh my god, I missed that line and, and now I have to try to put it back. You really don't have to put it in there. Um especially since we're we're using such a harsh color black. Um on all these colors that we just kept really bright uh, don't feel like you have to overdo anything on this with black it does not need to be overdone um, it's really just kind of hidden in there in a few a few spots and especially with the boat you know, like the boat is probably the most um, the darkest part of this entire painting but don't feel like anything has to be overdone So before we add a boat or we add the tree or anything like that, I'm gonna go back to this real tiny thin liner brush. I'm gonna go straight into white. I'm gonna just iterate some lines. There's really not any rhyme or reason. I just really want these nice wispy lines just happening all throughout the water. So I'm just wisping it on here, real tip of the brush. If you want to do some yellow, you can do some yellow. But I definitely want to make this look like water so anywhere you kind of see a line is already made with some of your strokes you can add these wispy lines or if you don't want to follow that and you just want to make some lines you can do that too they can run into each other what I would make sure is the lines back here are gonna be much smaller than what's happening up front here while we're closer so definitely don't try not to do anything too large. That's why I have this small liner brush. Even if you wanted to take and line all the way across here, you can. And again, if you are losing some of the line as you're going across, that's good, that's natural. Lines don't have to be full circle. They can they can trail off at points and come back at others, and that makes it more interesting to look at. I also ended up just throwing kind of a, a dark line back here. Maybe it's kind of a shore or an, um, a bit of a wave. Make sure it doesn't. Make sure the paint doesn't bead on you because what I mean by that is it'll build up real big on the very tip of the brush. I don't want that. I don't want a big bead of paint on there. I just want real thin paint. But coming under here, maybe there's a little bit of a wave coming in from back there. But that's so far away that we can't really see it. can even throw, well, we'll save that for later so I can make sense of it for you. Um, let's hit this tree before we hit this boat. I think that'll be a good, a good, we'll set down. We'll do this in layers. I didn't do the, the first tree in layers, I kind of just threw it on there. But I want to go in depth with how this tree should work. So 
the very first thing I do with this liner brush, there's a lot of stuff with this liner brush that happened in this painting. So if you just have a small line brush that you like to use, that works too. Just very tip, very, very tip of the brush. Add a little water if you need to the tip of the brush. Make sure the paint doesn't bead. Like have a big bulky thing of paint on it. Um, so that you can make these nice thin lines, but I just kind of line out the tree before I ever put down how large the branches are. So I want this tree to go this direction. I want it to be that long. From there, that's where I'm gonna branch out with all my branches beforehand. So I don't care that, again, it's disappearing in certain spots, that's fine. Just keep every branch real thin. They don't have to be the same length as anything else. Just kind of throwing in a lot of different branches in here. Of course, there's a bug in here. So, continuing the branches. <laughs> you can throw one down here if you like. that's kind of the gist for now of what we're going to lay down for the tree other than coming back in here with maybe something a little bit bigger or the same brush if you're using a small brush already and that's larger than my liner brush stick with that brush and now is when I would make branches and these are going to be you know I start at I come to where the branch starts and I come a little bit at the top and I just bring down like I'm doing a triangle to meet the branch arm. If you want to make this thicker, you can. Just make sure it stays thin up top. Make sure we're still good. Yep, still good. All right. Again, I don't care if I'm seeing through it a little bit. That is fine. They don't all have to be larger, just just a few of them. Anything that's branching off of something else needs to be smaller than what it's branching off of. So the main branches are gonna be larger. be pretty large down here that's fine and once you have those bases down you can come back in here and make more branches if you like this is your tree if you want to add more feel free to do that I think it adds a lot more room to add so that everything's not looking the exact same we don't want symmetry. Especially with a tree. And up here, um, I use black. If you're like me and don't always like to stick with black. You can add some dimension to your tree if you'd like. It's your painting. Um, I can show you how to do that real fast if you want. If not, I did not add any anything extra than this on the example. But if you'd like to, you can. 
can go as far as you want to go with your painting. And the way I would do that is I take my small brush and take a little bit of white or a little bit of blue even, maybe a little white and blue. You can kind of um, play around with the colors you like to, to add here. And you can come in here and add just some spots here and there, kind of fizzle them in, work them in, brush them in into the thicker parts of the tree. A lot of these details probably won't be seen, but it still makes a difference for the piece. Because maybe, maybe you will see it. We're not really sure. Um, but if you like to do full detail like I do, maybe you don't know where it's going yet because it hasn't been decided, you can throw in these extra details and make, make your tree stand out more. Maybe you don't want to cover it. Uh, maybe this is winter time at a somewhere where there's water and um, <laughs> it's cold and the tree hasn't, you know, it doesn't have leaves at the moment. Maybe it it's a winter time. It's just not icy water yet. So some people would not have the intent to cover the tree completely. You can use some yellows in there if you really wanted to. Maybe the sun's reflecting on it, like it's reflecting on the water. Uh, you can add accordingly, you know, different details that you'd like to add to your tree. I'm going to leave that at, at, at where it is, let it dry up a bit, and then show the steps. Uh, there's a lot of, um, there are a lot of levels to the tree that I didn't add in the example, like I said, but I think it'll be good to show for this here, this piece. Um, it'll help the tree be less blotchy if you do it in layers and I think it'll really bring it to life even more um, let me hit my light source up here real fast a little bit and later on I'll have to just go in with full white and put that back in there but uh, let's go to the boat if you want to draw your boat on here beforehand you can do that um, if you want to draw and, and work around it I, re I wouldn't for something like this I wouldn't suggest drawing on your canvas first um, unless that's what you're used to doing and that's part of your process. If you're just starting out, uh, this is a scene I like to start from scratch. Um, and then, because you can always see your lines over top of this paint. This is real bright paint. You can see your pencil lines. I'm gonna sketch with my brush here. Um, but there's a little bit of an angle to this boat. I'm just gonna start with a line. I'm probably gonna keep it pretty small, so. The boat's going to end here. It's going to go back. Back about. It does not need to be a straight line. We're actually going to do some things underneath the boat. But try as hard as you can. It's going to go back about there. It's only going to go that high. So. It's kind of just a sideways smile face or frown, however you look at that. <laughs> and then a line is coming back out. So as it comes out, it's gonna go, it's going to come wider. I know I said it's gonna stop it there, but we're gonna adjust it a little bit here. All right, so. We're gonna bring it around here. So 
So there's a little bit of a weird angle to this boat. If you like the original, the size of it, feel free to go that size. Um, I kind of like this size more so. And the first sail, we're going to start up here with the tip. I'm using my liner brush again, if I didn't mention that. The very tip of the first sail is going to be there. It's going to come down. It could be swoopy, however that you like to make your sail. You know, the wind's pushing it, however it is. When I come back up top, I, I start at that tip that I started with, and I bring it down. I don't like to come out. I like to come down first, and then out to keep that nice pointy tip. And don't be fooled by the drawing. It's going to look a little odd. But when we fill it in, everything's going to work conveniently. <laughs> and the other sail is actually going to be a lot longer. So going through my bird again. The wind's kind of hitting it however it's hitting it. Back to the tip. You can give this curve motion if you like. And then bring it down. It doesn't have to be straight down. You can add some, you can add some movement to it. I'm gonna add a little water to my black to make this line stretch a little more. And we have sail number two. Before I really do anything else, I started to make these lines. Um, the way that I was thinking was as if. The masts, I think is what they're called, are holding up, are kind of sticking out. I made some that are, have other thin lines on them. I just kind of went every which way and added accordingly. Same thing on the other side, just kind of added some peeking out from behind. And then I just went to the top here and I brought down some of these real thin lines for what's holding everything up. So I just kind of covered accordingly. Brought it all the way down. Same thing on the other side, just a couple. some lines underneath these some lines underneath here the further the smaller the closer the larger Got the beginning of our boat. If you'd like to do this now, you can go ahead and start filling this in. What I started with was a mixture of the blue and the red and the black. So you can either, if you want to stick with just silhouette, just go with black. Um, if you want to add more um, Add more intricacy and like detail to your silhouette. You can actually start with kind of blues and reds and work these things in. So we'll cover as if we're just gonna stick with one color. Just cover with all that. Let it dry and then I'll show how we add, add more to it to make it stand out.
on these uh, sails, I am staying more up and down motion. And on the actual boat, I am going to go side to side motion. Kind of sticking with the direction of the lines. So that they are consistent with each other. Two sails covered in here. I may take a trip to the bigger brush for mine, for the boat. But feel free to stay whatever brush you're comfortable with. covered in I'm gonna let that dry let's go down to this tree and start filling in these levels that I was talking about I'm gonna stick with the fan brush level number one it's gonna be really dark so you can either take black and really water it down a lot or add some red to it I'm gonna add a little bit of red to mine and a lot of water I want this to be pretty see-through. There's a little bit of this orange actually too can go into that. So I, I just have kind of a weird brown. Real watered down. Um, dab it on the plate so that we can see through it still. But level number one, we're just gonna start dabbing these dark areas on the tree. Can even go darker than that. We actually will want a little bit of black down, down in here. Not a whole lot though, just a little bit. So, barely on, on the brush here. It's okay to get it real dark. This is just kind of a premeditated leave, leaves. Nothing too much. It's kind of starting to get it started in there. If you want to kind of um, even fill some areas like here, kind of where it gets darker, you can do that. That's level one. At this point, we can take it to level two, which will be dark green. So let's mix, if you don't have green, um, you're going to mix blue and yellow and say more on the blue. If you do have green and you also have blue on your plate, you're going to mix a little bit of blue. So I just want a dark, dark green or a teal. Um, it's totally up to you whether you want a dark green or teal. Just mix your colors accordingly. Have a little bit more paint on the brush this time and I'm not going to dab in the area more than once so you know you're just going to dab again over top of what we just did 
and I'm switching the direction of my brush as I'm doing this so no leaves are there's nothing um what's the word I'm looking for symmetrical here there's no symmetry for our tree like I said earlier I don't want everything to look the exact same I don't want it to be linear I really want it to just be naturally happening so we've got our dark green if you want to make a few different kind of dark greens you can do that they're all gonna help this tree come to life but leave some spaces in between leave some gaps it's good to see through the tree if you want to leave it at that point you can if you want to come up a level with me I'm just gonna to go to a lighter green so more yellow in that green is gonna lighten it or brighten it if you want to lighten it with some white and kind of fade it out a little bit you can I added some white to mine so you can brighten and lighten you can just brighten or you can lighten yellow is the bright white is the light I'm gonna start adding the exact same way just kind of come in throw it on top here the exact same way that I've been doing leave some spaces as they are to see through the gaps and that's gonna be that's gonna be the tree it is up to you if you want to go with some brighter trees or brighter leaves on your tree just keep brightening that green Um, if you like yellow, the example has yellow in it, and it has a little bit of white. But I'm just gonna take it one step higher here in a couple of places. I don't want to overdo it. This tree here is kind of what, um, the tree and the lower water with all of the yellows and oranges that's what stuck out to me with this painting um and it really made me think along the lines of um it'd be really good to kind of show with your primary colors how you can achieve something like this it's, it's pretty simple and it's just some simple techniques that you know you put together if you want we can add some more branches to this uh, tree too i remember i did that very last just kind of sticking sticking them out a little bit here and there wherever you like stay real thin I'm quite happy with this tree and there's so many different ways all right we're still good so many ways you can um do this tree sorry I got a call out of nowhere I should have set my phone to do not disturb but all right we're still good um so many ways that you can do trees this is one of them and it's a, it's a good kind of intro if you are not used to doing trees to a standard kind of idea for a tree um, real simple real simple techniques all right so we got our tree in let's visit kind of the water down here while I'm still letting this dry a little bit more um, I'm gonna take my fan brush and here's where I like a certain set of colors that go together turquoise and purple um turquoise and purple and a little bit of black um i like them together it there's it rings to me um sometimes people put that as kind of a galaxy set of colors so i like galaxy i like purples and blues and pink and, and black and everything put together like that um so when i saw this water 
and I was trying to think about the shading of the waves that are kind of coming toward us here. Um, I was thinking, you know, what kind of darker shades would I like to go with besides just black? And I thought blue and red will help a lot with this. So first off, I'm just going to make kind of where I think some of these waves are coming up, where they're going to be lighter. And I'm going to put down some blue underneath. And just kind of work some areas with that. Staying wavy like we were before. And then I thought, well, you know, I'm going to take these in levels like I, like I did with the tree. So I added blue and red together to make some purple. And throw that in there. Maybe that's a little too red. Let me get a little more purple. There we go. So it can kind of transition between a few different colors here. You can take them long and keep them thin um, or short. Really, however you were thinking. But each of these are basically underneath of a wave or underneath of a small kind of ripple wave. Nothing huge, just kind of a the dancing water. So over top of that, I take this white. To make it look wavy. Pretty much the same kind of technique. Just thinking wavy. And I'm using the very, very tip of the brush so that you can get kind of the divided, those divided lines you get with a fan brush that are really nice. Maybe there's one under here too. And lastly, I take a real small brush and I'm gonna add kind of a black line underneath of each one. I don't want to overdo it on the black, I just kind of want it in there a little bit. That's what starts to make it look more real as you bring it along. And you're tweaking it, making it do what it needs to do. A little bit in there, a little bit in there. If you want to come back with a finer brush and white and just put some different streaks in there, you can. The more you work on this, the more it's going to look like water. So take your time, don't rush it. If you want to come back and do some more with the fan brush, you can. Going right over top of some of this.
little bit of water will spread it out too. And if you ever do too much and you want to come back in the blue, you can. Do some lighter blue in here. We got some waves going on. All right. So thinking along those lines, we're gonna do the same thing to the bottom of the boat here. Um, I really like putting the fan brush, just dipping in the white and then dabbing it actually right under the boat there. But I'm gonna kind of hit. You know, the boat is sunk into the water. We want to make sure it's not just on the bottom line here. We want to make sure it's sunk into the water. And it's smaller as it goes back further. So it's pushing this water out of the way. And if you want to go darker. It's gonna get darker down down on the bottom here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black to my brush. It can be wet, a little bit of water if you wanna add water to it. I'm actually gonna follow this trail underneath underneath of that. If you'd like to go back in and kinda of dab more white over top of that line even, you can. I'm going to go back to my liner brush. And I'm going to zigzag from the sails from real thick to pretty thin. It doesn't have to follow you know that same it can the water is going to distort this so it can even be distorted itself so you can decide if you want to keep it distorted if you want to keep it as is i'm also going to throw some right in here i'm going to take this fan brush again and just leave it uh, wet no paint on it just wet kind of fizzle some of this stuff in so brush it in. It's up to you if you want to do this step or not. However you like your shadow or your reflection of the shadow of the boat. Totally up to you. And I want to come back in with some different liner strokes again maybe we'll do some white in here we'll do some blue if you want even do maybe a couple black. All right, so we got our waves, we got our boats pushing through the water, we've got the boat's got the shadow in the water. Um, let's hit the boat and bring out some of these details of the silhouette itself. If you wanted to keep that black, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, but if you want to start adding some little bit of texture to it, feel free to follow me. 
um, with this boat. I thought it was kind of cool that from about back here, coming forward, there are lines that kind of divide it. Almost like um, stripes. But this is just kind of the, the outer texture of the boat. Underneath that line can come the next one. It's pretty much like that. And actually we can come back in here with some dark colors. It doesn't have to be black, but it can be. I'm gonna go with more of my blue purple. My red and blue mixture. Kind of set these in here. By going between them and pushing them kind of together. Was just a blending technique. If you wanted to use a little bit of black, you still can. Like, come in here with some of it. Especially down here where it does get darker. That's bringing out the boat a little bit. Up here on the top, there was um, kind of a weird, I don't know what it's called, but there's a white line that starts right here and it goes across it's the whole boat there on top of that it's almost like there's a shelf or would you say like a banister or a place that you would grip or something that would keep you from going overboard some line right up top of there the black in between there or underneath the black I come in with my liner brush and I just put some black lines here it's coming down almost like the in between bars And I was thinking, you know, what kind of colors in this painting really stand out to me for kind of bringing out the sails a little bit more. And I thought about that kind of turquoise green down here. And so I mixed a blue and a yellow to make a teal. Add a little bit of black to it. And start to bring it out by just throwing in some texture here. And my thinking is the closer spots to the sun are going to be lighter and then the further spots are going to be darker. So I'm going to add lighter portions over here a little bit later. But for now, I'm just going to kind of throw in some spots of this, this color. You might like blue or... Um, just white, that's fine. It's totally up to you what kind of color you want to use, but I'm going to go even darker to the right. some white 
to my turquoisey color. Let's go a little bit lighter to the left. Gonna be a dull shade, um, and that's that's fine. This is a silhouette, so it's not you're not gonna see the full color. And then you can adjust accordingly. If you see spots you want to go darker, kind of add them in there. Also, even just add a little bit of uh, maybe yellow off to the side here if you feel like it. See how heavy the sun is kind of hitting the sails. Let's go back down here to the boat a little bit. I'm gonna darken it even more. Back to my smaller brush here. When it comes to waves and water and, and you know something something hitting the water and it's splashing a bit um, I like this technique it's one of my favorites it's, it's a spatter technique or a splatter technique um, I take my fan brush and very tip of the bristles get the white on there get some water a little bit of water will make this happen I'm gonna actually take and hit this brush so long here to get some of those splatter from the boat the more water you have um, the more dotty it's gonna be uh, the less it's gonna be more just lines of, of, of splatter paint just all over so take into account uh, what you like according to that and um, and splatter that on there. I believe that is pretty much the gist of this painting. Um, I hope that it helped anybody who um, is looking for something more out of their silhouettes when they're painting. Um, make sure you sign in the bottom right corner the color that you like. I'm gonna go with a blue. And finish your bottom edge if you haven't done that. And I will see you all Wednesday for the next paint. Um, let me know if anybody has any anything they like to do, anything they like to try. And if you did this painting with me, I'd love to see it. So put it in the comments below or um, message me. And I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you so much.